Hey everyone and welcome back. In this video we'll be taking a look at getting Perforce installed on the system and again integrated with the Unreal Engine. So although this one seems a little bit more daunting than the other setups, it's actually fairly simple. Uh, the word server does come into this. It's gonna, we're gonna be hosting this as a local server. And to do that, we'll just need two different things installed. Now, the two things I've got, again, I'll provide links for this in the description below as always. But I'm also gonna provide this generic one just because in the past I've started having uh, issues in some of my previous videos, even when I've only been out for like a week or two, and links are becoming outdated as they're getting updated by the providers. So what I'm gonna do is the main one we want to navigate to for the per Perforce downloads will be the perforce.com slash downloads file URL, and we can go from here and download everything that we need. So this next step is very important. We do need to do this in a specific order, and that is that we want to download the Helix Core P4D server, and we'll come back and download the other thing a bit later to make sure that we don't do any of this in the wrong order. So you can see that that's just here. We'll download the P4D. This is gonna be our local server. I've already got this open, and all we want to do is we can ignore the side options over here, and we just wanna go down to the download information. So fill this in for the platform that you're using. I'm using Windows and the 64-bit option. It's going to pre-generate this with the latest version for you, and you can then just hit download. When you've done that, you'll be greeted with the requirement to sign up. Now, this is a free sign up. It will take some of your details. Uh, fill in what you need to here. I've already done this, and for some reason it doesn't remember me. But once you've done that, you can submit this at the bottom, hit register, and you'll automatically be presented with a new window saying download. Hit that download option, and you'll have a file on your system which should be called Helix Core, followed by the version of the system that you've chosen. Launch the executable and we'll start installing the first part, which is the server onto your system. So I've launched my Helix Core Server 64. You've got a few options here. I tend to leave this as standard. Generally, what I like to do is put all of my stuff on the D drive and move that over from the C drive. You do get the option to do that here, but I have found that if you do this, with the Helix Core server, you also need to do that for the next thing we're gonna install. And for some reason that stops the application that we want to use being found by the system. So for this installation, I just say leave everything as default here. It's been the most foolproof and reliable way I've seen to set this up. Uh, the next page when we've hit next, this is gonna be very important. We do need to leave the port number unless you have a very specific understanding and requirement for using a different port, leave this at 1666. Again, we can hit next. And then for this step, all we're doing is we're choosing the server name, which we're just gonna leave as the port again. We can choose a text editing application, which should be fine as Notepad. We don't really need to use that very often. And then the username that you want to store. And this is gonna be for the system that you're using this from. So I'm gonna leave that as my name. And then we'll hit next. And again, finally, we can hit start and we'll get this to do the simple installation of Helix. Uh, Helix is just the, the way, like I've mentioned, that we're gonna be hosting a server from our system. So after that very brief installation, we should be done. We can hit finish and that is the first step done. So if we head on back over to the downloads page, so we've just used the P4D, which is the server. The next thing we want to install is the visual client, which is kind of like what if you've watched my other source control tutorials so far, that would be like the source tree or the Git desktop. And we can see that's over here. Now, the reason I didn't want to mention this ahead of time is because if you choose to install the P4V first, and this is worth noting if you've already tried this, couldn't get something working, uh, is that you might need to uninstall the P4V installation that you have on your system, just because if you try to then install P4D afterwards, then the P4D installation will fail if it can detect any other Helix software on your system. And if you have already gone through this process, you've probably got stuck here and that's what it's gonna be. So try and do this from a clean install like I'm doing. We'll go through, we'll once again, choose your Windows system, your platform. It will pre-populate the latest version for you and then simply hit the download button. Again, I've done all of this already, so you can just hit the download here and you'll be downloading another executable. This would be called P4V install. Uh, and then again, the version of the installation that you've downloaded. So when you find the installed file that you have, Select to run the installation, we'll hit next. And again, I'm gonna leave all of this as standard. We can see here that this is defaulting to the C drive as well. It's in exactly the same folder, which is the important thing that they're both housed in the Perforce folder. As I said, if we do it this way, uh, the P4V application that we're gonna be using doesn't show up for some reason on the system if you uh, give it a custom directory. 
So you always have to navigate to that folder to launch it, which can be a little bit annoying because this is going to be the bit that we're using quite a lot if you're using Perforce. Now you can again choose to take off things. I don't think the command line client is very important, but I'm going to leave this as default just because I find that this all works quite well as a package and it's a very small installation anyway, so we're going to hit next. Now here again, we've got the option to give ourselves a username. So again, I'll leave that as default. Notepad will be perfectly fine for the editor. This bit on the server, we still need the port to be 166, but you can give a server name if you wanted. You're just going to need to remove that later on if you're running this from the local machine. So basically the server name is what you'd give somebody else if you're working in a team. The full server name with the extension of the port. Whenever you're doing it, this off of the system where the Helix server is installed, then you just need to remove the server name. So I'm going to give this a an example of, uh, we'll just call this YouTube underscore Perforce. We then need the colon and 1666 of the port. So that's going to be my server name and the port extension. We can hit next and this will install everything as we need it. So again, this should be a very quick installation, took a few seconds and we can close that. And that is actually now the server setup and the desktop client ready to use. So if you hit the start button, type P4V, you should see this as the desktop app that we want to use. Hit that and this is what we're going to be using to sync everything up with our project. So sometimes I remember this coming up with the server, this might come up with your YouTube underscore Perforce or whatever you called your server. Now, if that is the case, uh, I haven't had to do that this time, but just keep in mind that if you're running this off of the same system where you've installed your Helix server, which was the first step, then you do need to remove the server name and just run with the port number. With that done, we also need a user. So we've created this kind of template user at the moment, but it doesn't actually exist. So if we press OK, it's going to say that, Rob, uh, there's no such user. So what we want to do is hit the new button. So I'm going to set the username uh, really boring. Just going to keep that as Rob. Same again. Uh, all of these are going to be local details, so they don't need to be... Uh, there's, there's nothing that this is linking to on a website or anything like we've done in the past. To the point where you can just make the password a single digit. This is just for you to sign in with in the future. And it doesn't actually need a proper email address if you don't want to fill that out. So further details in with what you want and hit save. And we now have a user to sign in as. With that done, you can also give yourself a workspace. Not important. Uh, for now, we're going to do that a little bit later. But we can hit OK. And this will open the P4V client for us. Okay, now in comparison to some of the other apps, there's quite a lot going on here. So step by step, what we're going to do is we're going to link this to a project that needs to already exist. So like in my previous videos, I've already created a project. It is a completely blank project uh, using 4.2 if that's important, uh, which it won't be, but just in case you wanted to know. And I've called this uh, YT underscore Perforce. And like I mentioned, created this with a blank project and I don't have anything in here yet. This is important though, just because we need a folder to point to and it's generally easier just to start with the folder of the project that you want to use going forward so get to this step make a project and have that ready when you've done that we'll come back here and we're going to select this drop down option we have here which currently says no workspace selected and we will add a new workspace so this is where we get to start uh, deciding what we want to call things so up here the workspace name will default to the desktop name so i'm just going to call this again yt underscore perforce and this is just going to match with the project name that I've got as well, just so things kind of sync up and make sense when you're looking for the content or the projects. So if we hit OK there, this will take us to the next stage. If we try to hit next here, you can see that this doesn't actually respond at all at the moment. And that's because we've got nothing synced up. So it knows that there's no actual workspace to set up yet. So this is our server 1666. We're going to hit browse and we want to navigate to wherever you have created your project. So for me, that's on the D drive projects Unreal and the YouTube underscore Perforce. So I'm going to put this in the root folder, the select folder, and we'll see that that's hosted this just underneath the server. And we can now actually press next. And that's all we really need to do. We can leave this as default and again, hit next. So it's telling us how much uh, space this is going to take up, uh, which is very small because it's a blank project. If we press start, that's going to sync everything up and host the project inside of the work space that we've just made. So this is where if you've got different things, you've started using a lot of different repositories, you're going to have different workspaces and you can select those then from here. And we can see this actually gives us uh, information of what is included inside of our project at the moment. So at the moment, we'd expect to see nothing and that's perfectly fine. So this is now ready to actually sync up inside of Unreal. So if we go back over to the project and inside of Unreal, we're going to do this the nice and convenient way so that we don't need to keep going between the applications. So if we navigate over to the source control, and we want to connect to source control. For the provider, we want to drop this down and select Perforce. And what this should do is detect the Perforce installation that you have. So if you followed exactly, this will know uh, where to detect Perforce. 
it will find the workspaces that you have. And you can see that we have the YT underscore Perforce uh, followed by the port number. It's already detected that the user that on the system is Rob. And one thing I wanted to show is if we hit the available workspaces now, it's gonna look for something and not be able to find it. And again, this is just because we are doing this locally. So we want to remove the server name, drop this back down, and this should have hopefully found uh, an available workspace, which would be the one that we're using. Okay, now for me, that didn't actually work, which is really handy. I uh, just uh, had a quick debug off screen, and I just want to run through that with you in case when you drop this down, you also don't get an available workspace. So like we saw, as expected, if you're doing this locally and you have your server name also included like so, then when you drop this down, it's gonna do a search for the workspace and it's not gonna find it, which is what I expected. Uh, but then when you remove that, what I then expect is that it will find the YouTube Perforce workspace that we just created. Now, first of all, that didn't happen. And what I had to do to correct this was to close the project. So say run without source control. And then after closing the project, if you go back to P4V, it should still be open anyway, go to the root folder and just hit submit. Now for me, this is gonna say no files found and that's fine because I wasn't 100% sure if this would fix it. Uh, when you have that though, there's gonna be a text box and it'll ask you to input something there. I just type the word init for initialization and then remembered that I needed to sync this up. So then hit the submit button, which is at the bottom left. Uh, and this will actually put push at least the very basic empty project to the server for you. Uh, with that done, you can actually stay within here and double press the U project and this will actually open the U project from P4V for you. Now this isn't a uh, requ requirement to get this synced up. Uh, it's just a quick way and not needing to go back in to the Epic launcher or find the project on your system. Now with those two things done, that was all I needed to get this back into a working state. So now when we go back in, we can go into source control and this should all work for you. So we can select Perforce again. Uh, the server name shouldn't be there. It should just be the port by default now. And you'll have access to the workspace that we just created on P4V and all of this needs to be filled in before we can accept settings. So if for any reason you couldn't find that and you left this clear, tried to accept, you'd get an error. So we do need to make sure all of this is included. So we're gonna make sure that we have that, then we'll press accept. And it'll say that that's been uh, successful and we're now connected. So the important thing is what this now means is that inside of the content folder, if we start adding things, for instance, I'll create the new folder like usual, I'll call this blueprints. And inside of the blueprint folder, I'm just going to create a new blueprint class, create another actor, and we'll call this BP underscore actor. So if you've, again, if you've seen the previous videos on source control, this is all very similar now, just to see that things are working. Uh, so what we have with the new actors, we have a question mark. So we wanna make sure that we save this so everything is updated, so the project knows that we're keeping this. So it now has a uh, plus mark, which if we go to source control, means that we have this checked out and it's also being added to uh, the tracking list for the repository to track. So rather than going back to Perforce, we can now go up to the source control button. We can hit submit to source control and we'll see the files down here, which are going to be added to Perforce when we submit this. So I'm just gonna give another uh, small description here and we'll just say new class added. We'll hit submit, that'll do its thing for a little while very quickly. And that has now been added to Perforce. So if we just open P4V to double check this, we can go to content. And in fact, we can already see that this is included because we now have the new blueprints folder. And inside of that, we have our BP underscore actor. So what I wanted to do very quickly is just to demonstrate what's happened as well uh, off of the screen. Just copied the current actor that I have in the, uh, in the window. In P4V, as long as we've saved this, what I should be able to do is get the option to submit inside of P4V. Uh, and this is what I mentioned earlier. You'll get the box when we're syncing this up, if you couldn't get the workspace to display, you'll get this box. You need to type something in here just for the uh, submission to be allowed and then hit the, the submit button at the bottom left. That's essentially the same thing as uh, what I just did on the source control. So that's, that's pretty much what we needed to do. And again, that's all synced up. And if you wanted to save the new class as well, we're just going to submit that. It's picked up that because we did that in P4V, it's just gonna give a warning saying there's actually no new files to check out because that's already been done through the application, uh, which is obviously great because we can see that they are both in sync and talking to each other properly. So that is the basics of getting a Perforce server set up and also integrating the Perforce or the Helix uh, P4V application into the Unreal Engine. Now, one very important thing that I kept forgetting when I first started working with uh, clients which were using 
Perforce, uh, and something that I just needed to get used to is that whenever you're using a project which has Perforce installed as the repository, always make sure that you try and open P4V before opening the Unreal project and definitely open it and get it running in the background before you make any changes or start adding any functionality, uh, just because it can cause some conflicts and confusion with Perforce and syncing the data uh, when you don't have the client and the server running. Uh, it's definitely something, it, it's not going to break a project, but it just gives you a few extra things to fix and work out afterwards. Uh, a little bit of a pain, so always open P4V and then the project and then get started. Sometimes I do remember having issues where it just tells me that I can't save, and I always forgot what that was when, like I mentioned, first getting started with Perforce, uh, and it was just because it's trying to work out whether to check out the file, whether it's available, um, and also where to save it. Uh, and it seemed to be having issues struggling where to save it to as well. So yeah, just a general tip, there's open P4V, then the project, then get going. So with all of that done though, you should have a working Helix client and server set up on the system, linked to the project in Unreal. And if you followed the other videos, we've looked at the three main different types of source control that is currently being used with Unreal Engine, and how to get them all synced up and working properly. As always though, if you've enjoyed the video or found this useful, please do leave a like and share the video around, that really helps. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.